Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. At this moment, please silence or turn off your phones for duration of the ceremony. As a reminder, during our honors portion, please place your hand over your heart or salute if you're a veteran or current military. At this time, we'll turn the ceremony over to our chaplain. Thank you, and please be seated. <clears throat> to the family, let me say that you have done everything that you can do to show your love for your dad, for your gramps, for your great gramps. And today you've honored him so very beautifully. And now you have gone as far as you can go with him this side of the grave. I'm comforted by the truth from scripture that tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So today, as we lay the body of Chief Gaylor to rest, we do so with absolute confidence that he has just made the greatest PCS move of his life. And he's reunited with the ones that he loves so very much. Chief Gaylor asked that I share these words with you. You remember me saying that he took a great interest in this day and uh, wrote out everything he wanted to happen, including the scripture that I will share with you now. <laughs> so Chief Gaylor didn't write these words, but he loved them. These were his most cherished words from scripture that I'm about to share with you. I think he loved them so much because they described his life. They just captured his life so well and his faith. As I thought about these words and how they were written by King David, I thought of how much Chief and King David had in common. Both military men both rose to the top rank, and their stories are strikingly similar, from humble beginnings in a small town, beginning as a shepherd boy, and to rise to the highest rank. And like Chief Gaylor, King David had a wonderful way with words, as you'll hear. Then whenever he was an old man, he looked back on his life and he remembered his time herding sheep for his father. And he saw a great truth. He saw that a quality of a sheep's life is directly related, directly, totally dependent on the shepherd that he follows. He realized we're so much like sheep totally dependent on the shepherd for provision and protection. And sometimes we go astray, and the shepherd comes to bring us back. The quality of our lives is determined by who we choose to follow. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Follow me. So now I want you to listen to David's song we know as Psalm 23 and see if this doesn't describe Chief Gaylor's life and his faith exactly. And I hope that Chief Gaylor and King David will give me some grace for the liberties I take with the text. Because the Lord was my shepherd, I've had everything I've needed. 
He made me to lie down in green pastures and he led me beside quiet waters. So many times he restored my soul. He guided me along right paths in life for his name's sake. And even when I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I was not afraid for he was with me. His rod and his staff, they comforted me. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil. And then the next words are my favorite. I think it's the most beautiful picture of a life well lived, a life blessed of God. My cup overflowed. My cup overflowed. Surely his goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. And now I will dwell in the house of the Lord, in the Father's house forever. Many of you were stationed in Washington, D.C. And you remember how that city is filled with beautiful monuments. The Korean War Memorial is one of my favorites. And I have so many memories of ceremonies at the beautiful Women's Memorial and the World War II Memorial. Driving from Bowling over to the Pentagon, I would pass by the Washington Monument each morning. 555 feet, the tallest structure in Washington, D.C., a tribute to our great first president. And then, of course, down the road a little further, there was the Jefferson Memorial and Thomas Jefferson standing tall under the dome. Well, I tell you, Chief Gaylor was an Air Force hero worthy of such a monument. Let me suggest a monument to you. It's better actually than anyone carved in stone. And I'm absolutely convinced that Chief Gaylor would approve this monument. Carol, Elaine, and Ken, the grands and the great grands, listen to me. The greatest monument you can raise to the memory of your dad and your gramps is this, a life well lived. living joyfully, living faithfully, living lovingly, living fully. Nothing would please him more or honor him better than you living as pillars in your families, in your community, in your church. That would be the greatest monument we can raise to Chief Gaylor. I ask you now to join me in prayer as I conclude my remarks. Lord, knowing how much you love this Gaylor family, Lord, I entrust them to your tender, loving care. I ask you to guard and guide each one so that Chief's le legacy of integrity and selfless service and faith will continue for generations to come. And now, Father, together, we ask you to bless our United States Air Force as they serve as a force for good so that we can continue to live safe and free. It's in your name we pray, and all the people said, amen, amen. Please rise for honors.
may be seated. As a final tribute to the chief, the honorary pallbearers will come now and place their boutonnieres on the casket.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our service this afternoon. On behalf of the Fort Sam Cemetery director and staff, we'd like to extend our condolences to the family and to friends who came out this afternoon. Upon exiting the cemetery, the processional party will take route up the Quezon route, which will take you to Fredericksburg Road behind me. We'll be exiting from our back gate, which will lead into Ritterman Road. We ask wherever you, wherever you end up, please arrive to your final destination safely. Thank you.